Welcome everyone. Uh, in today's video I want to show how I set up SQL Developer the first time I run it, uh, the preferences that I tweak uh, to make it look, to make it work the way I'd like. Uh, so I'll just highlight a few things that you might want to um, inspect if you're using the tool uh, to get the most out of your Oracle development experience. Uh, if this is the first video you've seen of mine, uh, if you go to my channel you'll see that I have uh, 50 plus videos on SQL Developer, everything from how to use it as a DBA to simple things uh, like how to use the Query Builder or even how the data grids work. And I cover all of our development products. So SQL Developer, the data modeler, our command line interface, and Oracle REST data services. Uh, this is what I'm going to cover today. Uh, so how the code editors look, um, how to deal with uh, objects when you click on them, uh, how to get the code insight not to get in your way, how to import your connections, uh, and how to format your code. So let's jump straight into the tool. And actually I'm going to step farther back than that. Uh, let's start with running it for the first time. So I'm going to say no to this because uh, I want to start from default everything. But uh, when you're doing uh, an upgrade which is basically you're installed the latest version of SQL Developer and you run it for the first time, you're prompted to um, bring everything over that you had from a previous uh, version of SQL Dev. And you'd normally say yes to this. Uh, I'm going to say no just so you can see what it looks like starting out from scratch. So the usage tracking dialog, that's just saying, hey, it's OK to share with Oracle anonymously. Uh, the windows that I use. So we can see how much time you spend in the worksheet versus how much time you spend in the table editor and that just helps us prioritize where we um, invest putting time and money into building new features for you. Uh, you're more than welcome to turn this off. Alright, so I'm in a brand new instance of SQL Developer. I don't have any connections. I don't have um, anything set. So I need to do just a few things to get it to the way I like it to be. And the first thing I'm going to do is import connections. So I don't have to start all of these from scratch. And what I've done is set up um, an XML file with all my connections in it, which I'll show you how to do in a second. I'm going to import them first and then show you how to export them. And we do password protect these. I want all my connections. Let's say I don't want these though. So that's a lot less work for me. Now let me show you how to export these. So uh, you just right click on your connections and you say export select the connections that you want to have available on another machine or another install point to the file that you want to create I have a SQL dev folder on my machine where I put everything and if you want the passwords included uh, just provide a password here and that's what you saw me getting uh, prompted and then click finish. But I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. Alright, so I've got my connections in. Now let's go look at some preferences. Alright, so uh, the first thing I do is I go into Code Editor Display and actually go into Code Editor Fonts. The default font is something I'm not a big fan of. I choose the font that I like and I also bump the font size up. I usually go pretty big because I'm doing things like videos and we need a large font so you folks can see what I'm doing. Um, if you're dealing with uh, internationalized text and you're wondering if your font supports that, uh, you can put your uh, funny characters here and you can see exactly how it's going to display. So you don't have to guess what it's going to look like just to make sure it's going to be what you want. Um, the next thing I do 
those that come into the formatter. And what I like to do is I always like to say right align keywords. And I like to turn off line breaks after select from where. And I also like to have line breaks before commas. Uh, you might completely disagree <laughs> with what I've set up here. Uh, but the nice thing, as you make these changes, um, you can see um, what the code is going to look like after you do format on the right. So you don't have to guess uh, what these preferences are going to do. The next thing I like to do is come down here to PL SQL Syntax Colors, and I like to set this theme to Twilight. I like a nice dark contrasting uh, theme for my text. It's just easier on my eyes. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is come into Database and come down here to Worksheet. And I'm going to say uh, Grid and Checkerboard or Zebra Format. Uh, which we'll see what that does in a second. And I would say finally, but I think this is the last thing I like to do. I like to come in here into database and I like to come into object viewer and I turn off open object on single click. Alright, so let's, oh I do one more thing always come into preferences and come down to third-party JDBC drivers uh, and I deal with a lot of um, third-party uh, databases for working with migrations and I just add the JDBC drivers so that I can connect to those as needed. So I've got one here for uh, Amazon Redshift for doing migrations to um, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse Service and I have one for SQL Server and Sybase. Okay, now let's actually do a connection and see how these preferences have impacted uh, the way SQL Developer looks and feels. So we can see this dark contrasting theme. I can see my text coming in in the format that I want. Um, this is my SQL history. And the nice thing about SQL Dev is the SQL history um, is saved independent of the versions of um, SQL Developer installed on your machine. Um, we keep that in a central location and all versions of SQL Developer are going to use the same heat SQL history. Uh, which is quite nice. Um, I see another uh, preference that I always turn on and off. I right click in the gutter and I say toggle line numbers. I always like to see my line numbers. Let's run a query. Here's that zebra grid preference coming into play. Now let's say I don't want to query all objects. Let's say I want to drag and drop one of these things that's hard to click into. Now normally out of the box, when you open an object like this, it's going to open it, which for me gets in my way. So I've turned that open object on single click off so I can do things like drag and drop it here. Now let's look at the code insight. I've turned off the automatic code. Oh. I forgot to turn that off. So automatic code insight is on. So as I'm typing, and after I wait about half a second, um, SQL Developer is going to try to help me, which for most people might be okay, but for me personally, I'm not a big fan of that. So let's come back in here and look at that option. So I come in the code editor, completion insight, and I uncheck enable auto pop-ups. So what I get instead is I can stop typing and I can wait five minutes. It's never going to come up. It's not until I hit control space bar that I'll get the helpers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss new ones. And uh, happy SQL diving out there.